This first question is really interesting because uh, it's from Krista, and I'll read it to you. It says, can you comment on the Aston Martin drivers wanting to help each other out over the radio during the race? While Sergio kept quiet about his hiccup on turn 15, presumably Sir Max wouldn't be aware. Obviously, the Red Bull drivers have more at stake than the Aston Martin team, but I find the dynamics fascinating. Rachel, what did you make <laughs> of this sort of like... Can we call it a bromance or is it like a father son relationship it's, between uh, Fernando and Lance? I don't know. I love the way, as you were reading, as you were saying that, Matt, Blake hugged himself because as a team, you want drivers helping each other like that, don't you? So I imagine for you, that's that's the dream. And actually, that's what Fernando said. He said, look, you know, if we find something different that the strategist didn't tell us about in the morning, we tell each other, we share that information. And he said, we're working together as a team. And Fernando's not stupid. He knows there are other teams out there where there is one driver who, you know is dominating that team Fernando is making it very clear to everybody we're best buds we're working together I'm helping him he's helping me and we are getting Aston further up in the constructors who knows maybe there's a nice big bonus in the pay packet if they get a further point in the constructors and he's thinking of that as well I don't know but it was it, it is fascinating and I mean, they are both happy. I've never had Lance so happy in the pen before talking to me. He's he's enjoying this as well. I know he learned a lot, a lot from Seb, but he is loving this battle or this um, comp- competition with Fernando. He knows, you know, he's not going to, he's not matching Fernando on track at the moment, but he knew that wouldn't be the case. This is a two-time world champion, but he's getting close and maybe even closer than he thought he was going to get to him. So he's enjoying this season. And the way they came over the radio where Lance said, look, I'm not going to attack him. And Fernando said, no, let him have a go. You know, it's brilliant. We love all this. It was one interesting element to a rather um, long race. I'll put it that way yesterday. Um, But yeah, it's great. And they both seem really happy. Long may it continue. Let's hope it carries on this way. I was going to say, I mean, imagine learning your, you know, I mean, Lance is obviously an an accomplished Formula One driver by himself. But I mean, imagine having the tutelage of both Sebastian Vettel and Fernando Alonso in sort of consecutive seasons. You've certainly got the the pick, haven't you? Uh, Blake, have you you ever experienced team teammates working that closely together? I mean, having come from Red Bull, I'm going to probably guess no. I think I think the one thing is the the way the drivers approach it, and they they keep quite compartmentalized. But one thing that people don't get a whole lot of insight to is how the engineers are working together. At the end of the day, during the qualifying and the race session, I would at the, at the time I would have Max and Daniel's data up looking at them, and if the if the performance engineer did something on their car, I was like, oh oh Matt, what was that? And he's like, oh it was this. What do you think about that? And we'd we'd have we'd be having a conversation on the intercom about the settings and changes and what we're observing. And I've always got you know. The engineers probably have six voices in their ear at one time. That's, that's not a, a mental issue. It's it's more just like all the intercom going on and maybe and maybe some demons saying, you know what, don't tell them the brake shapes there. But no, at the same at the same time, uh, that was that was really cool that uh, that Fernando did that. But at the same time, teammates and the engineers in the background are very often working closely together, and you can't afford to have inter garage rivalries like that now with as which is much as at stake. Maybe in the past you had some people getting a little bit catty about stuff, but we, we were very open. You know, Friday night we'd talk about what we're doing. Um, I he- you hear everything that's going on at any time during qualifying. So if you miss something, you're say, oh, they've noticed something. I would pass that on to the race engineer or driver when the driver's back in the garage at the same time. So that was that was a nice little thing for Fernando. But I wonder what he's up to. <laughs> I wonder what he's up to. I'm, I, can't, I can't help but think what he's up to. I think with this one, it's his. I think it's his sports car um, mentality that kicked in for a little bit there. Because when you share the car with one other driver or two other drivers, and you've just driven a mega stint, you're quite often asked, you know, how are the conditions out there for the next driver just about to jump in. So you're quite well. Your your brain goes somewhere else when you're in the car, and obviously you need a lot of capacity to do that, which Fernando clearly has. And so you're out there doing your own thing and you're, you're actually actively thinking um, in sports cars before you come into the pits. You're, you're thinking about, right, how do we best keep this momentum going? Because this car right now is feeling good, but there are pitfalls out there, places where you really need to take care, braking into turn one maybe, where there's a bit of rear locking. So you pass that on to all of your teammates or the teammates just about to jump in after you. And I just wonder, it was only it only dawned on me there because I was... I was kind of, when I watched it, 
when I watched it back, I did laugh along with everybody else thinking, you know, like, what was he up to there? Was he actually trying to put him off in some way because he knew that was a dodgy brake balance? Of his car? And Lance oh, had a bit of a moment. You had a bit of a snap. He had a bit of a snap. Did he mean to do it? Like, it's Fernando Alonso after all, that devious guy. But it only just, it only just dawned on me there. No, it was probably that's the way he's been trained uh as part of his armory as a driver he's he's more experienced not just in terms of age than anyone out there he's more experienced in terms of what he's done in other forms of motorsport and i think that's that's really interesting and i think it's playing to his i think it's playing to his strengths uh and also giving him advantages uh and the team advantages that other drivers just it just wouldn't be on their radar to help another, yeah, okay. It obviously means he doesn't see Lance as a threat. So if you don't see him as a threat, like you clearly don't with your other two teammates because they're sharing the same car as you in a sports car and you want the whole thing to carry on going with that same momentum, well, let's help them out here because as a, as a, as a unit, we can all be better. So it's really interesting for, uh, for F1 to see this kind of schooling if you like from another taking something from another category and applying it to f1 the pinnacle of single seat motorsport i think it's i think maybe that's what was going on it just came to him as in that moment as second nature oh i found something and this is really going to help us as a team be really good if we can keep those two mercedes behind us uh if i can relay that information somehow to to lance uh to keep those those pesky mercs behind because uh as a unit this will be better 